thank you for clicking on my video. I wanted to share some of my favorite palettes with you today and really this is what I have uh, for the month of January of 2023. I'm gonna start with the cheaper or like less precious and go up to the ones I really care about and, and really enjoy having. So this is my uh, first ever palette that I got. It's the uh, Winsor Newton Student Grade uh, Tiny Beautiful Little Palette. It's plastic as you can see. It comes with this very small, dainty little brush that I never used because it's too small. It's great for like details or maybe like writing or if you're doing a portrait, uh, you can do like the eyes and small details like that, but I've never used it, honestly. I've purchased a few of these palettes throughout the, the years. I like giving them away as gifts or uh, for people who are just starting with watercolors because um, one, the quality is pretty good for a beginner. Um, they last a good time um, and they're cheap and easy to get on Amazon. They sell them at Michael's and Hobby Lobby, um, unlike most of the other palettes. Uh, this, this is carried in most art stores, so they're easy to get. Um, very good beginner's palette. And then they came out with the, with the new design, same concept, new design, a little bit bigger, still plastic. It has more mixing space and uh, a bigger brush. They now give out the, those like plastic brushes that, that hold water in them. I, I think I lost mine, but uh, that's a better beginner brush than the than the other small one. I honestly prefer this one for ease of use and, and just uh, being smaller and, and can be carried anywhere you want. Uh, but there's a little bit more mixing space in this one. So those are my cheap ones aren't new in student grade palettes. The next one I have is a palette from Amazon that I got for uh, putting gouache paint in. I haven't filled it yet, but I did like that you can actually close it. You can hear that click. A lot of palettes don't actually close all the way. I think it was like maybe $8 on Amazon. I, I like the design. Um, it's something I'm not gonna use for anything professional or anything serious, but um, what I bought it for is, is how deep those um, spaces are for filling paint in and it, it can fit a lot of paint. It's a lot of mixing space. Um, gouache usually dries quicker than watercolor paints and so this is, I don't think it's gonna leak because you can close it like that and um, it could be just taken on a small trip you know, around town uh, if you're going out. It does have a thumb hole. Um, holder so you can hold it like this. I usually don't hold my palette this way uh, but some people do and this one is pretty light and easy to hold. Actually, most of my brushes are not gonna fit in here so I'll fill it and start using it sometime soon. Plastic. Okay uh, next one is a fun one. It's my portable painters micro palette. In general, I don't prefer plastic palettes, but this design was a smart design and it's just so adorable, I had to buy it. Portable Painters, they make another uh, portable palette that is pretty popular. It's one that, that fits like I think 16 colors maybe or 12 and it has two water uh, containers that go on, on each side and you can I think you can put it on your knee or your leg as you're painting. So it's a it's a cool design, not for me, but this little micro one was just a genius uh, design. So you open it this way, pull it out. This is a water container, I believe. So you can, you slide these two pieces in just like this. And as you can see, it's got a, a good amount of mixing space for how tiny it is. Uh, a lot of water uh, space right here. And I think it can fit, it came with its own pans. I don't know what I did with them, but it can fit about six of them. 
in here or maybe one whole one and one little one. I think it's plenty for this kind of size. If you're a sketcher that does maybe mostly ink and sometimes you shade a little bit with watercolors, you don't need a lot of colors, this would be great for you. It does have this little clip that you can, I think, put on your sketchbook. A limited palette would fit beautifully in this one. So that's our portable painters. Let's see, next one, uh, let's talk about, let's talk about my vintage palettes that I sometimes collect on eBay. Uh, I found these two for like $10. They're metal, uh, they're maybe from the 80s or 70s. They came all rusted and nasty, and so I just cleaned them up and spray painted them with um, white enamel paint. Uh, and I've used this one a little bit. Uh, they're, you know, they're not like, they don't even fit pans very well. Yeah, they'll, they'll cover your pans, but they don't close as you can see. So uh, if you take this one out, you might put like a rubber band on it just to keep it closed. Um, but I've done like where I filled it with whole pans all the way and had a brush or a pencil in there. But it's fun to have just extra palettes like this laying around if you're experimenting, if you just wanna have separate palettes for, for more colors, or maybe you can just Put pencils in here and brushes. It's got a lot of mixing space actually and uh, it's just a pretty design. I Let's like talk that. about the the aluminum palettes. So for the most part you've got plastic, aluminum, you've got steel, and you've got brass and ceramic. Those are the common materials that are used for palettes. Aluminum obviously tends to be really light and I think that's why a lot of manufacturers are moving towards aluminum palettes. This is a new Maybe it's an imitation Holbein. I'm not sure if it's a genuine Holbein palette. It's a good little palette. If you fill your 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 paints, you've got to let them dry before taking this out because it's easily opened. Sometimes they get sticky and they, they close better because they've got paint on them. I love the size of it. I love holding this little guy. It's not as uh, compact as something like this, but for the most part, it does give you a lot more mixing space than a palette this size, and um, it can hold a lot of different colors, which is which is wonderful. It's aluminum. It's not as sturdy as the steel or the brass palettes that are out there, but some people like that. I usually prefer the uh, original design from Holbein, the steel palettes. I think this one's... Uh, number 500 uh, they sadly stopped making these steel palettes i don't know why because they were really popular and um if you find one online definitely buy it because they they don't make them anymore uh, but they're very special they um this one stays here in my studio it's um perfect for bigger pieces it can hold a lot of paint uh, you've got you know five different mixing spaces here uh, so you know when you're using a bigger brush you can fit that in and no problem you can even use something uh, as big as those the hate brushes like this one uh, if you're covering a big area on your paper like a sky or an ocean or something like that you need you need to use something wide like a big this is a three inch brush and so you need uh, a palette that can Hold that in. I love using this Holbein palette. It's, uh, I found it online and I bought it right away because I know they stopped selling them and making them and so uh, that's a shame because it feels like quality. Uh, the dividers here are high enough to where the paints are not gonna mix together when you create a, a little puddle for each color. Uh, so it gives you that division where while a lot of other palettes they're not designed to the, the divider is really like small, so you'll, you'll, you'll end up mixing colors by accident. So it can muddy your palette a lot faster. Um, well, this is a really, really good design here and it's very um, sturdy, it's hefty. I like it. Holbein 500, I think they make uh, Holbein 1000, which is a little bit bigger. And then they've got some smaller sizes as well. But as you can see, it does not close at all. 
it's just it's not made for that it's mostly made to be you know put on a surface that you're not gonna move it a lot so that's my whole bind palette uh, next I'm gonna talk about my schminke palettes uh, this is my everyday paint box that I take with me um, in my uh, expedition pouch it fits perfectly in here so this is the one that I you know I don't care if it gets scratched it's been used almost uh, almost every every week every almost every other day for the last like four years maybe um, I don't have schminke paints in here because I used all of them instead I have the the core uh, paints in here the pants uh, Core, uh, Q-O-R, if you haven't heard of this company, they make uh, lovely colors, very vibrant, and they they tend to, if you mix them with other uh, brands of paint, they will push the paint away. Quick little demonstration for you to show you what I mean. So you can't really, you know, you can't mix Winsor Newton and Core together because what happens is if you use something like this and you use the Core, um, Colors, what they will do is they will push the, as you can see here, they will push the other paint on the paper, uh, which if you're looking for that effect, it might be really fun for you to play with this. Here's an orange from, uh, I think this is an M gram uh, paint. And if I use core, that's gonna dominate and push the orange over. It's kind of fun to watch. Anyways, going back to the Schminke palette, uh, I love this palette. You can, some people take this part out and end up filling three rows of uh, paints in here, uh, and that way that you can get more, more colors in the palette. But I, I like using this, this part of it because I just like the way it holds my, my paint for me, and uh, you can also replace these with other colors and you can replace them with a whole band if you wanted only to use the full, the whole pans instead of the half pans you can do that you can buy them individually and pick your own colors and stick them in there like that at one point i had also like jammed some half bands in the middle here, but it's it's a little tight when you do that. Anyways, so I love my Schminke palette. Lots of mixing space, and you can see the design here. They've they've allowed you to have three full washes here, where you know there's a good divider in the middle, and then this is for your individual colors. Um, yeah, I just love this. It's light, and I usually stick it in my middle finger like that easy to use, very durable, and light. This is what's gonna travel with me when I go anywhere, when I travel anywhere. I take this little guy. And then the big brother here, this one, I, I got this one because it was the Hazel Stone um, palette, so she had picked uh, specific colors in, in it and I wanted to buy those colors but I ended up removing them and then using this as like a holder for all my uh, colors that I don't use as often or maybe I don't like the color uh, like some of these here or I ran out almost ran out of the, the paint I don't know where to put it. it still has a little bit left in there so I'll stick it in here. I don't like this size because it's not, it's neither a studio size nor nor is it a good travel size because I think this is really big. And I most definitely am not gonna hold it like this. Uh, it's just, it's, it's too big for me. And I ended up removing the flap that's on this side because I, I thought it was huge. I just, I don't know, I don't like it for, um, for that reason, but I just keep it to hold all my, rejected pants <laughs> uh, but the quality is good aluminum as well yeah schminke is a great company my favorite actually 
Okay, uh, let's see what we've got here. We've got our specialty palettes left. Let's see, um, this is my, oops, my ceramic one. Uh, Real quick, this is another vintage palette that I found. So it was in Mutant's College Box. Uh, found it on eBay for, for a good price, so I bought it. I like the size and um, it's it's a little, I think it's steel, not aluminum. So it's a little heavier uh, and it can fit a good amount of uh, pans. I ended up uh, putting some M grams in here and uh, some gouache white because I've been experimenting mixing uh, watercolors with gouache. Um, so yeah, that's my... Uh, it, my vintage palettes are just palettes that I get just for the joy of getting a palette, not because I need them. I just like experimenting with the older designs and just owning some of the older vintage ones. I'll end up selling this at one point, I'm sure. Okay. Which brings me to this little guy right here. This is <laughs> this was a, a pill box, I believe. Uh, really cute design that I found on eBay. I already put paint on it by accident, actually spray paint. So I need to fix that. But I ended up taking the the plastic part that was in here and spray painting this. I need to spray paint it in white. I was out of white, so I did it in black. I shouldn't have done that. But uh, this is a, this would be like a cute, cute thing to take with you if you are not wanting to bring the whole uh, bag of art supplies and you just have this little box with you and a pencil or a pen. You could just put a couple of whole pans in here or maybe uh, some people use graphite to, to paint with and so this could be a good graphite box. But yeah, we'll see if I use it. I just really got it for how cute it was. I'm gonna clean this up. Uh, it came with this little box as well. But it makes for a beautiful gift for an artist, I guess. You can do that. And before I go to my two special, most special palettes over here, I'm gonna just talk quickly about my ceramic palette. Um, I wanted to try ceramic to see if it feels better when you put paint on it and it truly does it feels better than any of the other palettes I have there's something special about mixing water on a ceramic palette it, it seems to hold the paint really well for you and it doesn't bubble up and it doesn't it just it's so smooth and uh, you can see what your color is uh, clearly on on something like this uh, and I, I really enjoy how much space you've got here to you can create a big wash honestly and, and use your really big brush um, but it didn't come with a lid so the paints do tend to dry uh, because they're left out in the open sometimes I just um, spray a little bit of water on them before I use them and that should do it but it holds a lot of paint. It sits here on my table. I use this when I'm, you know, painting commissions. I, I feel like it, it gives you a, a good space for mixing and really thinking about what colors you want to use. Um, yeah, it's just not, not something small that you, you're gonna worry about, like how much you're mixing on here. This one, you're not gonna do that. That brings me to my Last two palettes, um, these are both made out of brass. Uh, this is like, for a watercolorist, this is uh, the most desired material or the most desired uh, feel and look for a palette. Um, people use brass because it doesn't rust unlike, you know, steel eventually will rust if water hits it. Brass will not, so that's one reason people love it. The other reason I think it's because um, people just really appreciate something that's well done. It's got a beautiful color and sheen to it. Um, mine, I think, needs a little bit of cleaning. I need to buy a brass uh, cleaner, I guess. This one is handmade. Uh, there's a lot of uh, different people out there that 
handcraft these palettes and, and make them by you know with a lot of effort and uh, meticulous design it, it usually takes like six months to a year to get them in the mail uh, they're just beautiful people buy them for the for the for the joy of owning a beautiful tool something that's handmade uh, and hefty and uh, one that you know this design is is very small so you can still take it with you um, out on a trip I, I do that sometimes it's definitely heavier than my schminke palette um, right here my daily palette but it feels more special it it honestly works better because it's got three mixing spaces two little wash spaces even just the sound of <laughs> closing these flaps is, is lovely to me and uh you can take this out and clean it i have scraped mine and you can see the brass underneath but i'm still not worried because it's not gonna rust i just need to uh maybe fix that and, and spray paint it um, but yeah it's just a beautiful design um Keep my color swatches in here for reference. Uh, this is made by a Chinese company. Uh, he was selling them on eBay for really cheap compared to what you usually see for this size. They're about $450, which is astronomical. This one was maybe around 200 and so I jumped on it, emailed the guy, and I got it. It's number 92, so they've made 92 boxes when I purchased this one. So they that tells me they're still in the, the early stages of, of making them, but maybe that's that's why it was cheaper online. But um, I've tried to find more information about them and I could not. Their eBay shop is closed, they don't have a website, I could not get a hold of them. So I'm sorry that's not helpful for you guys who are looking to buy something like this. But just keep looking on eBay. Sometimes uh, these sellers pop up and I'm glad I got to purchase this one for a fairly good price. Um, so I, I love this one dearly and I'll, I'll have it for a long time. The Fraser Price box. Uh, comes in this really pretty, pretty box. Uh, show you how to use it which is I think it's pretty easy to use but I appreciate the packaging it's uh, this is an older product that used to be made in like the 70s and 80s first design was uh, was very popular that a lot of different manufacturers uh, started making it Daniel Smith had a, a box like this produced as well so but for whatever reason the industry moved towards plastic I think and they became really valuable boxes on eBay, so you can find them now for like hundreds of dollars for the vintage ones. But last year, Jackson's Art Supply started making this again. And I think the Fraser Price uh, name was, uh, it's the, the original artist's name that, that made these, uh, that created the design for this. Uh, he was a painter himself, and um, they decided to remake the, the new box. I think the brass is a little bit uh, thinner on, on the new design. Um, I think you can still find this box on um, Jackson's Art Supply website. They're from the UK, but they have a US store uh, on their website. I jumped on this when I saw it. It's really cool to see them readapt the old design and make it again. Uh, they made it a little bit lighter than the vintage one. This one is reasonably priced, maybe I think $120. Um, which I think is a good price for this design. Um, so uh, I'll show you what I've done with mine, actually. It's got this little a piece right here to open it. And what this also serves as is if you paint with it on a table like this, it can sit flush. It's a genius design. You might have seen it online uh, reviewed already, but uh, it's got a lot of mixing space. It's got a very comfortable, I would say, thumb hole. Most thumb holes are really tight. This one's like nice and comfy. And you've got a lot of mixing space. You've got one, two, three, four, five <laughs> mixing areas. But for me, what was problematic is that um, the water container is very small. So you've got your clean water and your dirty water for cleaning your brush. But this is... I use a lot more water. So what I did is instead of 
using it like that, I would take these out. I would put a sponge in here to wipe my brush with. And I found this little uh, watercolor container on Amazon. And what I do is I just hold it like that. And this fits a lot of water. In that way, this space is used well for wiping your brush. And maybe you don't need as much water as me. I tend to just use a lot more water than this. I still think it's a genius design and um, just love the whole setup. Just very, very compact and very beautiful. So there you go. All of my current watercolor palettes. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this video and just, you know, got an idea about what's out there and maybe what you would like to use. And if you've got any questions, I, I would love or comments. Uh, I'm always open and would love to hear your thoughts and uh, would love to answer any of your questions. I, I can predict maybe a question saying, if you can only have one palette for the rest of your life, which one is it going to be? And I think the answer would be is my brass palette. I would always carry something like this. I would take this one out of all my palettes. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you're still here, have a good one.